Welcome to AP Statistics. In this video, we're going to talk about stem and leaf plots, a great way to explore quantitative data. So what is a stem and leaf plot? It is a technique used to classify either discrete or continuous variables. A stem and leaf plot is used to organize data as they are collected. A stem and leaf plot looks something like a bar graph, but the actual data values are used in the graph. So each number in the data is broken down to a stem and a leaf, thus the name. Kind of confusing to talk about, really easy if we just show you one here. So here's an example. A random sample of shoppers at a big box store like Target or Walmart, they were asked how much money they just spent. So they walk out of the store, we say, how much money did you just spent? So they're going to give me a numerical value. That's a quantitative variable. So here's how I broke it down. So the tens digit is my stem. So that would be the 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and so forth. Then the leaf is the ones digit. So you'll see that we have two people that spent $34 and then somebody that spent $35. So you want to have these in order. But here, we're, it's, it's almost like a dot plot, right? Like we put a dot for the person who scored 34, the dot for the person who spent 34. But the cool thing, but instead of using dots, you're actually using the numbers from the data. So in a dot plot, the dots represent the data, but you don't actually know the data value. There's just a dot there where it's at. Here, we're actually using numbers to represent the individual values, which is really cool because you can actually see the data. So here we see somebody spent $52, $61, $61. It's super important that you have them in order. So as I said a moment ago, most of the time we have our data. Maybe we have our data in a jumbled mess over here. And then we create our stems. You kind of have to know your min and your max to know where to make the low value and the high value here for $150. Then you just start looking at your data like, oh, somebody spent $34. I'll put a four right there by the three. Somebody spent $73. I'll put a three right here in the seven row. And that's pretty much how it goes. And you could kind of make the stem and leaf plot as you're analyzing or examining your data. And that's pretty cool. It's just a really nice way to organize. But the, night, the greatest thing here is we could still actually see the distribution. So what's a distribution? What values my variable takes on and how often it takes them on? So if I look at this, I now have a great picture. Say, hey, uh, most people spent $34 to $150. That, that's, that was the spread, $34 to $150. But most people in my survey spent somewhere in the 60s and 70s, right? $60 to $80 is what was very common. The typical center, uh, the typical value, maybe $65, right? I'm just kind of eyeballing that up. About $65 was a very typical price. Some people obviously spent more and some less. You could even say 70 Like you could say the center 70 even though nobody spent $70. 70 could be a great center, a typical value of what was spent here at this big box store. But we also see shape. Because the numbers are stacking up, we can kind of turn our heads and see the shape here. And I would probably, I mean, you could say this is uh, pretty symmetric. You know, I do see a peak in the middle. I see this nice peak in the middle, less to the left, less to the right. Now, the right-hand side is a little bit more spread out because of this maybe possible outlier here. $150 seems to be pretty spread out. It's There's a big gap between the rest of the data and that $150. So I see a big gap there of no data. But because of that, it might actually be slightly skewed to the right. So the majority of my data is on the left-hand side towards the smaller numbers, less to the right. Um, one other important aspect of these is you typically want to have a key so that you understand it. Like, you know, there could be a situation where that is not 80, that's 8.0, or maybe that represents 800. So you really need that key to make sure you understand what the values represent. Let's look at another one here. Here we looked at 11 random bags of potato chips and 11 random bags of tortilla chips. And we um, selected the bags and we recorded the number of calories per serving that was measured in each bag. And now this is called a back-to-back. -back. So we have two different sets of data, but we were measuring the same thing, the calories per serving. So on the left is the potato chips, on the right is the tortilla chips. So again, notice my key here. So that would be 150 calories. So um, we have 11 in the middle. So that's one, one, and then zero. So 110 calories. And another tortilla chip bag had 110 calories per serving. No potato chips were that low. But we did have a potato chip that was on 120. So again, the stem is in the middle. That'd be one, two, and then we tag on the zero for 120 calories for that bag of potato chips. Um, the greatest, the, the, the most 
calories per serving was 172. So that was one of the potato chips. But again, we can now talk about the data, right? The typical tortilla chip bag is around 145, probably a good center there, about 145 calories. Where potato chips, I'd say, is might be a little higher, maybe around 155 calories. So what am I doing right now? I'm comparing tortilla chips slightly higher than potato chips as a collective whole. Um, tortilla chips looks to be, I mean, kind of symmetric, maybe a little bit skewed to the left. So to the lower numbers, there's a little bit more of a, there's a gap here, a little bit less. And then we see most of the data is towards these bigger numbers, so slightly skewed left. For the potato chips, it's actually also skewed left. Don't let it being on the left-hand side confuse you. Skewed left means that less of your data is at the bottom of the lower value. So I definitely see less data towards the bottom, more data towards the top. So that's that skewed to the left look there. So pretty cool little stem and leaf plot there. Here's another one. We were again looking at two different sets of data, but we were measuring the same thing. Here we were looking at the total commute time that you spend driving to and from work. So we looked at several adults. We said, all right, how much total time do you spend in a car um, driving back and forth to work? And we looked at urban adults, people that live in urban areas. Those are like your um, you know, cities, right? And then rural, it's out kind of in the country. And we definitely see a difference here, right? For the urban, I would definitely say skewed to the right. Again, skewed to the right is where we see most data at the smaller numbers. Uh, most data at the smaller numbers, less data to the other end, less data to the, to the far right end. So that would be skewed to the right. The rural actually looks kind of like uniform. I mean, symmetric as well. Like you kind of fold it in half. It's not going to match up exactly, but it's pretty close. But uniform means that you kind of see the same amount in each group, right? There's, there's not like this huge difference. I guess in the 50s, the 51 is kind of low compared to the 40s. But again, it's pretty close. Now, remember, we saw this earlier as well. Why are there two threes? So the first three is for the bottom of the 30. So 32, 30, you know, 33, 33, 34. So that'd be from 30 to 34. The second three would be from 35 to 39. So we kind of split those up just to kind of split up the data a little bit. Um, what about center, right? The urban, you know, probably around 30 minutes, 29 to 30 minutes is a pretty typical commute time. Rural in the rural area, you're talking more like 40, 42 minutes is a typical center. So we definitely see that if you live out in the rural area, you typically are going to drive more to get to and from work. So kind of cool. We could see that both have similar spreads. I mean, I don't know if I would say one is more spread out than the other. The urban goes from 26 to 42. The rural goes from 32 to 51. So the overall spread of each is pretty similar. But we do see that the rural, the rural adults is definitely higher. All right, here is another one. So an environmental group conducted a study to determine the amount of lead measured in parts per million in several local reservoirs used for drinking water. And so again, imagine we get a bunch of different reservoirs all throughout a particular state and we measure the amount of lead in them in parts per million. And we see some great information here. So again, notice that they're split up. So the, the first three is for the bottom 30s. Uh, oh, wait a minute, notice that key, not 30s, the 3.0, 3.5, 3.8, 3.8. So make sure you take a look at that key. I almost messed that up. So uh, again, for the 40, this is for 40 through 44. The second four is for 45 through 49. Pretty simple. But again, what are we looking at here? Our distribution. So the typical lead levels in the reservoirs ranges from 2.8 to 6.8. That's my overall spread. However, I do see that a typical amount of lead is somewhere around 4.8 to 5.0. That'd be a pretty typical value. And sometimes you just gotta stick to your guns. Like, all right, 4.8, if somebody next to you says 5.0, I mean, those are both pretty close in terms of the center of the data. What about shape here? I'd say fairly symmetric. If, if I kind of folded this in half, it's not gonna match up perfectly, but it's fairly symmetric. I don't see a huge tail to one side that would be skewed right or a huge tail to the other side, that'd be skewed left. I don't really see that in the data. It looks roughly symmetric. You know, that's kind of roughly symmetric there. But again, stem and leaf plots, really simple to analyze. Really take a look at that key so you know what you're dealing with in terms of what those numbers represent. 
But at the end of the day, what we care about is just being able to talk about the distribution. What values does my variable take on? And how often does it take them on? Look at the shape, look at the center, look at the spread, all those kind of really just basic, I don't want to say vague, but they kind of are just basic things to talk about when you look at this data. All right, that's it for 7 Leaf Plot.